Hello people in chat, Megan here and it's time for another memory lane video. Today I'm going to be talking about Pokemon the Movie 2000. So, like the first one, I saw this in theaters. I was about nine years old and I believe Child Megan liked this more than the first. I remember I saw it with my brothers and I have a vivid memory of my mom falling asleep while watching this with us somehow. So as a kid, I never knew this had an actual title, but when I was looking it up, it apparently did, and it's The Power of One. I literally only know this movie as Pokemon The Movie 2000. So the fact that it has an, another title, an official actual title, is news to me. But I do find it funny how the first movie, as well as this one, is kind of mixing Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon. Like, Lugia is Gen 2, like Snubble and Meryl are in the first one. So yeah, there is actually not too much I remember about this movie other than the legendary birds. So yeah, those are my memories from before re-watching the movie. So let's go into my thoughts from while I was watching this movie. So I won't lie, I geeked out quite a bit when the Kids WB logo came up before the movie. And I actually totally forgot that there was a little Pikachu short before the movie itself. Like, I remember that the, um, frick, I can't remember the official name for it, but there was a little Pikachu one before the first movie, and I know there was, like, a Pikachu and Pichu one in a later movie, but I did not remember the one we saw for this one at all. But, you know, it, it's cute. I liked it. So, for the movie itself, that collector guy was creepy. It's like, dude, calm down. <laughs> yeah, willing to mess up the flow of the world just to collect the birds. That's, you gotta get your priorities straight, dude. And also, uh, for the collector dude, I feel he caught the birds way too easily. Especially Moltres in the beginning. It's like, this is a legendary bird. A legendary Pokemon. I just, I felt he caught them way too easily. So I totally forgot that Tracy was a thing. I forgot that they replaced Brock for a while with Tracy. I, I somehow totally did not remember that at all. You know, when I was a kid I had mixed feelings about Tracy because I adored Brock. So maybe that's why. He just never stood out to me. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot Team Rocket had a Magikarp sub in the show as well as this movie. Whenever we cut to Lugia, you know, swimming under the ocean, and then when we finally see Lugia and he's like doing the song, Lugia's song is so pretty. It's it's something that I would love to listen to as I'm trying to fall asleep because it's just so pretty. My overall feelings about this Melody chick is she is a brat. Like, being really bratty about this tradition and this holiday her island celebrates. It's like, girl, that is cool. Just, mmm. Traditions like that are cool. And, and also, one thing that I must have missed as a kid. The masks the islanders are wearing and all that. They are supposed to be re representing, like, the three birds. Like, just watching it. I was just like... You know, that kind of looks like it could be like a Moltres mask. That looks like it could be an Articuno mask. Oh my god! Yeah, I I wasn't the most observant child. Still not really the most observant adult, but I noticed that. And damn Ash being so cringy about the whole Chosen One thing. I almost forgot how cringy he could be. <laughs> also, one thing I forgot about this movie is they do break the fourth wall. You know, the big screen joke and the motto at the very end, Slow King actually breaking the fourth wall with Team Rocket. Just, I forgot that was a thing and I'm just like geeking out like, oh my god, they're breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I get great amusement out of like media that breaks the fourth wall. Especially when it's done well and in a funny manner. And also, oh my god, they say the word sex in this movie. They say the word sex in a Pokemon movie. I don't know why, but I'm just like wowed by that. Also, I like the little Mew, ancient Mew card throw-in they put in this movie. Like, 
the collectors like collecting first started with a Mew card and it's like then we see it at the end as the ancient Mew card that was given out when the first movie was in theaters. I don't know. I, I can appreciate that kind of tie-in throwback. Just, I found it interesting. Also, just, what was the whole point of Slow King? I feel like if you took him out of the movie, it would still flow reasonably well. Like, if you replace Slow King with, like, a pillar with things written on it, you'd probably get the same effect. It just... It felt interesting having a random Gen 2 Pokemon that could talk and, you know, was just kind of there. But that's just me. Also, what is with Ash and physically throwing himself at things like an idiot? Yeah, in the first movie, he races at and tries to throw himself at Mewtwo. Then again, in the first movie, he <clears throat> physically runs and intercepts an attack between Mew and Mewtwo like an idiot. And now we have him, like, physically throwing himself at the cages that hold legendary birds. It's like, Ash, I'm pretty sure that's not gonna do anything. Do you have a death wish? It's like, kid, how have you survived this long? How are you still alive? I genuinely want to know. And kind of just like, I totally geeked out when we got Lugia's, like, big entrance. Like, I was totally geeking out. Like, for the Pokemon games, Silver was the first Pokemon game I ever played, followed by Gold and then Crystal. Or maybe it was Gold, Ruby, then Crystal. I don't know. I can't remember. But Lugia was the first legendary Pokemon that I ever caught in the games, so I don't know if that is the cause for my love for Lugia and my excitement for Lugia. I don't know. I just, I find Lugia a more fun legendary than Mewtwo. As cool as Mewtwo is. So, I'm gonna gush about Team Rocket for a bit. I love when Team Rocket does like alternate alternate mottos it, instead of like the classic prepare for trouble, make it double, yada yada yada. I love when they like change things up, be it in the show or in one of the movies. I don't know why, it just, I love it. I just love Team Rocket. And also, it was quite rude of Ash to basically leave Team Rocket behind after they helped him get to the last island to get the treasure. You know, he has to get the treasure back and all that, but it's like, dude, really? And then Team Rocket sacrificing themselves, but not really, so Ash and Lugia can get back to save everybody. Just as a kid, I got excited over that because it's like, oh my god, Team Rocket's good guys now. As an adult, I'm like, oh my god, I love you guys. You're horrible villains in the sense that you're cringy, but I adore you. Backtracking a bit. I don't know how I got this out of order, but oh my god. Asking Ash to put his life at risk to get this treasure is asking a little much of a 10-year-old. I know, you know, 10-year-olds, I guess are a little more hardy, for lack of better words. <laughs> but it's like, that's still asking a lot of a 10 year old. And at the end, I was face palming at the damn collector, still trying to get Lugia at the end. It's like, dude, really? Are you that much of a moron? Just like, really? <laughs> Are you that thirsty for these damn Pokemon that you're putting the world at risk? I mean, obviously, since he started this whole thing to begin with, like, in a way, it could give him the benefit of the doubt at the beginning. Like, he probably thought it wouldn't happen, that it was a bunch of superstitious nonsense and whatnot. But, you know, you would think, oh, this is getting real. Something is up. This is not right. And, you know, things are crumbling, he would reconsider. No. No. The world seems to be toast, but you know what? I still want to catch this Lugia. Those are my thoughts on Pokemon the Movie 2000, The Power of One. I can see why I could have enjoyed this more than the first Pokemon movie. As an adult re-watching it, I did enjoy this one a little bit more than Mewtwo Strikes Back. You know, it was cute. It was enjoyable. I feel this one flowed a bit better than the first one. As I finished the movie, I was trying to figure out why I enjoyed this one a bit more, and 
the fact that it flowed better is the only thing I could think of description wise. I mean it probably helped that we saw more legendaries instead of just Mewtwo and Mew as much as I love them. I enjoyed seeing the birds and Lugia a bit more but yeah overall I did enjoy rewatching it. I got some serious nostalgia feels. Yeah I'm not sure if this movie is something that I'd for sure rewatch in the future but I definitely say I'm more likely to rewatch this one than the first one. So yeah, that's it for this memory lane. For anyone still watching, what do you think? What are your memories revolving around the second Pokemon movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Have you revisited it lately? Let me know. Let's get a discussion going. And yeah, that's it for this memory lane. If you have any future suggestions for future memory lanes for me to do, let me know and I will get to them ASAP.